for joining. We appreciate your time. Um, my name is Dekel, um, and I run our marketing, product marketing for Cloud Foundry. What I will uh, walk you through the next uh, 30 minutes is a brief introduction to Cloud Foundry um, and open platform as a service and a demo. So the majority of the webinar today will be a live demo on uh, Cloud Foundry and Micro Cloud Foundry, um, how to get started quickly and how to deploy your applications. So this is probably what you're all familiar with when you just want to run an app. You're getting into a lot of complications, a lot of provisioning um, hassles. You need to wire a lot of middleware components, uh, do tons of configuration, where at the end of the day, developers just want to run their code. So what if you can do all that with just four simple API calls? You target any, any cloud, any destination. You just push your application. So with one command, you have your application running and deployed and ready to receive traffic without doing any middleware binding and any, sorry, any middleware hassles and any middleware wiring. You're not provisioning databases, for example, on your own. And not only that, you can bind services. So everything is a service. A database is a service. A messaging is a service. Um, and you can actually run your app after you bind your service immediately, as you will see in the demo. And further, you can actually scale your application to hundreds of instances with just single command line. So that's, in a nutshell, what we're trying to do with Cloud Foundry. We're trying to simplify developers' lives, allow them to deploy, application, deploy and scale applications in seconds. And very important, we'll talk about this in length during the presentation, not locking yourself into a single cloud deployment. So giving you the choice of services, the choice of frameworks, and most importantly, the choice of clouds to deploy your application, whether it's public clouds or private clouds on-premise. In the next 30 minutes, as I said, I'll run you through a short introduction to Cloud Foundry and a demo. What, I'd like, what I ask you to do dur during this time is think about your, uh, your next or your recent web application. Think about the deployment frameworks and the services you had to use or you want to use. And recap on the complexity of the deployment. For example, how many tickets you had to open with your central IT department or how many configurations you had to do in order to deploy this once. And then when you want to actually scale it, what, what additional effort was, was involving and what did you have to do. Follow the slides and the demo and then assess what it will it take to deploy your apps with Cloud Foundry, with the Cloud Foundry open platform as a service. Think about the simplicity of building and scaling your app when you can do it, as you will see, on your own laptop with Micro Cloud Foundry as a, as a developer getting started tool, or on a public cloud like cloudfoundry.com or with one of our partners that you will see later in the deck. And most importantly, you will not need to change anything in your code. So think about that. And then, Probably most important, just go and sign up. So as Lucinda said, uh, for the webinar attendees, we have an instant approval promo code, so you don't have to wait in line for approval. We have a backlog of users, so if you sign up now using Cloud Today, you get your free account instantly without waiting for approval, and just try our app. Try it, tell us what you think. So. Why do, we need, why, why do we need a different platform? What's changing in applications today? The first and probably most important aspect is frameworks. So frameworks are what really matters. Developers want productivity, they want innovation, they want to reduce time to market. They don't want to deal with a lot of stuff in the code that are not related to their uh, business logic. So if you look at frameworks like Node.js, Spring, uh, Ruby and Rails, and, and uh, many more, you see that what, what the common thing is that they actually allow developers to focus on business logic and what matters to the application and not around the things that are common, um, like opening database connections. New application types, that's probably not news to anyone, uh, much more mobile and social out there, and apps need to be released and update early and frequently. Data, 
lots of new data services, and deployed on virtual or cloud infrastructure. So what all of that means is the world where you have only one or two languages dominant is over. The world where you have, when you're writing all of your application to only one device is over. And the world when you can have, you know, only one type of data service is also over. So you need a choice of frameworks, a choice of services, and a choice of cloud to, for which to deploy them. And that's in a nutshell what Cloud Foundry is all about. It's the path of choice for the cloud era. PaaS, Platform as a Service, is basically the new way to deploy application in cloud. Think of it as kind of the new cloud OS. And when you're talking about PaaS, we believe it needs to follow those three core principles. It needs to be simple, so it lets developers focus on their code and not wiring middleware, as you will see in the demo in a few minutes. When you're deploying application with Cloud Foundry, you're doing one command line, VMC push, and you don't wire any middleware underneath it. Open. You cannot be locked into a specific cloud. When you, or in other words, when you choose your path, you don't choose your cloud. You don't have to choose the stack of frameworks that you, that you want to use. You don't have to choose the stack of services that you want to use from a single vendor. And most importantly, you don't have to choose the infrastructure that you're running on. When you choose your path, you basically choose a programming paradigm. You don't choose a deployment destination, a stack, or a set of services. So with Cloud Foundry, you can deploy on um, your own laptop with microcloud, as you will see. You can deploy on a public server, service based on uh, VMware infrastructure called cloudfoundry.com, and you can deploy to one of our partners that are running on Amazon and other clouds out there. And PaaS needs to be open source and completely open source from day one. And that's what Cloud Foundry is. We get tons of contributions and we'll go through that in a minute. Flexible and scalable. So when you, when you deploy an app, it needs to be self-service. So you don't have to uh, deal with you know, a lot of questions when you are uh, building your app and definitely you don't have to open any tickets. And it also needs to be extendable. Because as I've said in the pre previous slide, Probably what's the only thing we know for sure is that the frameworks of today are not necessarily the frameworks of tomorrow. And who knows what will be the next version of Node.js in, you know, in a week from now. So you have to be able to digest future cloud innovation. Just as an example, Cloud Foundry was launched around uh, a year ago. And less than 72 hours after we launched it to the open source community, we already had a new, a new framework contribution, Erlang. So it's really easy to add frameworks to Cloud Foundry. So what's, under, so what's in the box? When you, Cloud Foundry today um, is basically deployed, supports Spring, Grails, and Java frameworks, Scala on Lyft, Ruby on Rails and Sinatra, and Node.js. Those are the core frameworks that are supported by any Cloud Foundry partner, including cloudfoundry.com and microcloud. In addition to that, there is uh, a lot of contribution made by the open source community and our partners, including Python, PHP, Erlang, .NET, and many more. On the services side, the core services that are supported by Cloud Foundry are the vFabric Postgres database, the MySQL database, vFabric RabbitMQ for messaging service, Redis key value store, and MongoDB for big data. So you get a choice of databases, a very popular uh, messaging service, a key value store, and a big data solution. In addition, the same as frameworks, we get a lot of contributions from partners and developers around uh, frameworks from the open source community. The examples are CouchDB and, and many more. On the cloud side, as we said, our mission is to make sure you are not choosing your cloud when you choose your path. So today you have a choice of public clouds, uh, either by VMware via cloudfoundry.com or with our partners. You have a choice to build clouds on your developer machine with micro Cloud Foundry, and you will see that in the demo. And coming soon, you will have a choice of private clouds for deployment. 
I mentioned the multi-cloud or the choice of clouds a few times in the previous slides. Why is that so important and why, why do we keep saying that? We believe that multi-cloud flexibility is critical for your long-term success. So think about the fact that you may want to use public or private cloud without rewriting your application. So in today's world, if you want to move between clouds, you probably need to rewrite your entire stack of applications. You have to protect yourself against vendor locking. You have to meet different compliances and geographical needs. For example, you, want, you may want to choose a cloud that meets your data, data compliance requirements. You have to accommodate for peak loads while optimizing for cost, which means if one vendor you know, raises prices, you want to be able to move to another vendor. And you need to manage your growth. So your needs are changing over time, and you have to have a choice of move your application elsewhere. And the key here is that you need to be able to do that without rewriting your application. When we're saying multi-cloud, we don't, we don't just mean slides. Cloud Foundry today, uh, the open source project, runs and is adopted by uh, a growing number of community members that have either their choice of private cloud distribution, public cloud providers, or infrastructure. So if you go to our partners from AppFog, you can run Cloud Foundry on Amazon uh, AWS today. If you go to, our, to ActiveState, you can run private, uh, cloud, private, sorry, cloud Foundry in a private environment. Um, and you can see the list of partners, and that list, list is growing by the day. So we really have um, a lot of community contribution, community participation in this project, taking Cloud Foundry and basically making it available everywhere. So that's what multi-cloud is a reality today. It's not just slides. I'd like to double, in the next two, three minutes, I'd like to go over the two services that you will see in the demo, cloudfoundry.com and microcloud. So cloudfoundry.com is a multi-tenant PaaS operated by VMware. So it's basically a public cloud server, service uh, running with the frameworks uh, Java, Spring, Rails, uh, Node.js and Scala, and the services that are supported is Rabbit, Mongo, Redis, MySQL, and Postgres. That's what you see when you go to cloud. It's running on the vCenter, vSphere infrastructure. When you go to cloudfoundry.com, as you will see in the demo, you just get an account um, and you start deploying your app. As simple as that, and you can leverage uh, each one of those frameworks or services. The service is currently in beta. Um, so you have uh, a free, it's all free, and you're getting um, a better quota, basically. The other service that is available today, or the other solution that is available today, is MicroCloud Foundry, which is basically the industry-first downloadable path. So the entire Cloud Foundry solution, the entire Cloud Foundry path, is available on a single USB key. So that's pretty cool. You can take, everything is basically bundled into uh, less than a gig of uh, downloadable bits that you run on your laptop or PC, or PC or Mac, using uh, VMware Fusion Workstation or Player. So if you're a window guy, Player is for free, and uh, you can also get an eval version of Fusion to run it on your Mac, which is what I'm going to do in the demo today. The most important thing about microcloud, as I'll try to show in the demo, is the portability between that and any other Cloud Foundry instance. So in the demo, you will see how I'm moving applications without changing anything from my local Mac here running on a microcloud to cloudfoundry.com, the public cloud service. Um, I've mentioned the cloudfoundry.org, the community, sorry, community open source project that has uh, more frameworks and services uh, contributed, including a, a set of chef recipes to deploy this behind the firewall. So all of that is available on GitHub um, today under the Apache 2 license. So you basically can grab the code and build your own instance of Cloud Foundry if you want. That's the last slide before the demo. What use cases, what do we see people be using Cloud Foundry for out there? Um, so new applications, as we said, you know, people building social and mobile applications. We recently made an announcement with one of our partners, Feed Henry, regarding a mobile deployment solution. We see a lot of people doing uh, the dev test trial stuff. So what this image is trying to convey that 
With Cloud Foundry, since it's so easy to basically deploy and update and deploy again, you can get, do a lot of experimentation before you go to the actual prototype. We see a lot of app modernization, so basically people building new models to existing apps and people extending SaaS applications with richer frameworks and richer services. Uh, we, are, uh, we started a series of case studies on our blog at blog.cloudfoundry.com where we highlight the developers and what they're doing with the software, with the solution. So please go to our blog and you can read that. We have a couple of posts and we'll keep uh, announcing new applications deployed. So it's pretty cool. Really, people are really doing amazing stuff with this technology. So with that, uh, we'll switch to the demo. So from this point, um, it's all live, and if something happens, that's part of the fun. Uh, what I'm going to show you is actually um, two demos. So the first one is going to be, uh, I'm going to take a Spring application, um, and uh, which is an uh, online bookstore, kind of a place where you look for books and, and buy books. And I'm going to deploy that first to my local microcloud, microcloud foundry here on my uh, Mac using MySQL as my database. I'm all, then I'm going to deploy it or to move it to cloudfoundry.com using another database. Um, and you'll see how it's all very easy with no code changes and I'm actually going to scale it on the cloudfoundry.com instance. In addition, I'm going to show you how to use one of our recently announced features called, called tunneling. So you can actually, in your microcloud for development purposes, you can go and look at the actual data that is stored in the MySQL database. Then we're going to move to, uh, we'll have some fun with a Node.js chat application. This time we're going to use the command line interface of Cloud Foundry. So Cloud Foundry basically allows you to have two types of developer interfaces. One is an IDE, Eclipse-based IDE, and the other is a CLI which are, you know, they're uh, exactly the same. In the second example, we'll use the CLI tool. We'll deploy a Node.js chat application. We'll use the Redis key value store. And we'll show it first on the microcloud running locally, so you will not be able to participate. But don't worry. Then we'll scale it and deploy it to cloudfoundry.com, and we can see who chats first and participates in the demo. So with that... I'm going to share my desktop. Okay. So hopefully you can all see the um, cloudfoundry.com website. This is where it all starts. This is www.cloudfoundry.com. This is the main interface to the cloudfoundry.com and microcloudfoundry services. The first step is signing up. Pretty easy. Is put your, all you need to do is provide us with your email and accept the terms of service. And you guys, since you are on the webinar, you can use the promotion code and get instantly approved. Once you have your, uh, applica your password uh, in your email, the first step you probably want to do is install the VMC command line tool, which is as simple as doing gem install VMC. It's a Ruby client, so if, if you're using a Mac, you don't have to do anything. If you're using uh, Windows, you want to install you want to install Ruby again very simple once you've done that you're doing VMC target a very important command we'll see several times during the demo to your cloudfoundry.com account and you change your password so basically you're doing VMC password and you change your password I'm quite quite happy with my password so we'll leave it at that the next step is, since we want to use microcloud, we're going to download microcloud using that link. You use the same email and password that uh, you have for your cloudfoundry.com account. You log in and you download your machine, your, your VM. It's basically a VMX file that you can open either with Fusion or Player. In this case, I've opened it with Fusion. So what I have here, once I install it with a few simple steps, is you know this interface. And what I'm going to show you in this example is actually the offline version of MicroCloud. So uh, also something we released a few weeks ago. 
So uh, you can actually ro work on this uh, in, in a plane or without any network connection. So it's completely offline um, and you don't have to have any internet connection. So the second step is um, what I want to show you. When you're running microcloud, you probably want to um, disable some of your services if you don't have a lot of uh, horsepower on your local Mac. So I've just disabled Mongo and Rabbit in this example because I'm not going to use them in the demo. And now I'm ready to go and start deploying stuff. So this is the first tool, the first developer tool for um, Cloud Foundry, the Spring Source tool suite. I'm going to deploy a, a simple, uh, the bookstore app, first on my microcloud. So I'm connecting to my microcloud. I'll do this very quickly because we're kind of getting short on time. Um, so I'll provide the same email that I've logged in with. This is my demo account. I'm going to choose the Cloud Foundry offline tool. Typo. Gmail. Yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, okay, let's try the password again. Okay, are we good? And we'll do the same thing for cloudfoundry.com. Choosing a different cloud. You see this time I'm going to choose cloudfoundry.com. And in this example, I'm using the same email addresses, the same account. Obviously I can configure different accounts for my micro cloud if I want. So now I'm connected to both clouds. Now, this is how simple it is to deploy an app with Cloud Foundry. You just drag and drop your application from the project tree to your micro cloud. I'm not going to start this at the moment. You'll see in a minute why. So, and that's it, my app is here. That's all I had to do. I haven't started anything, uh, haven't deployed any middleware component. Now what I'm going to do, what is a bookstore without books? So I'm actually going to add a book service. Let's call it uh, BooksDB. I'm going to see, you remember that we have a several types of database services available. I'm going to select MySQL and I'm going to bind it. So if you recall the first slide, we said how simple it is to deploy applications. So we did drag and drop for the app, didn't wire any middleware. Now we have a database. We didn't start a database. We, we actually not even uh, configured the tables for that database. Because in the case of Spring, what we are doing, we are reading your, if some of you on the call are Spring developers, we are actually reading the meta in for the manifest file within the Spring project and creating your uh, database table. So you don't even have to do that. And once you are deployed, and, and by the way, this is all running here locally on my Mac with, the, with my SQL and everything. So I'm going to go to books cfmicro.offline, and if all works, you, you will see my, my book application running here locally on my microcloud, and we'll be able to add books. So let's give it a minute or two. It should be up and running. Just one minute. Here we go. Again, this is all running locally, so it's up to my uh, Mac. So let's create two new books and then show you how we just move the application somewhere else. Just two new books and one is available in stock. So you see, the, the, look at the, there is the, this is based on the roof framework for UI, but this is a complete website with database and web servers and app servers and, and routing and load balancing. And all you've seen me do is drag and drop from the project tree to Cloud Foundry uh, to MicroCloud. So I haven't had to do any of those uh, stuff in the back end. I basically could focus on my business logic. And second book. And now you can see the books and you get, you get the picture. Now, the cool thing is I can take the same application now and actually run it on cloudfoundry.com. So 
So again, the same story. And I'm going to call it Books uh, March, because this is now running publicly, so uh, we want to make sure nobody got the URL. I'm not going to start this either. And this time, I'm actually going to bind it to a different database. Remember, last time we bind it into a MySQL database. This time, let's say this is my production database, and I'm using vFabric Postgres. So not only that I'm, I'm not changing any bits in my code, I'm not configuring anything. And remember, now I'm moving between I'm moving between a private cloud and a public cloud, from my laptop to you know cloudfoundry.com. Again, the same story. I'm drag dropping the the service. I'm starting the application. I'm actually going to scale it to two instances. Let's say this is a production app, and I want to have more than one instance. So think about what you know, what you see now. You build your app locally with all the services together and everything is working and you were able to test it. And now you want to move it to a public cloud and that can be cloudfoundry.com, it can be the AppFall cloud, it can be the Active State cloud, um, it can be any Cloud Foundry partner cloud. And you just drag and drop it to a public environment and you're not re-architecting your code and you can actually use different services. So that's pretty cool. So if you and just to make sure you do believe me now we will we'll go and we we'll do books dot cloud foundry so it's books March, right dot cloud foundry dot com now you will be able to see the same book application running on the public cloud no changes so uh, we have about uh, three minutes left what one thing I want to show you is uh, if we'll go back to the command line. Um, and we'll do uh, VMC target back to my uh, micro cloud, so api.csmicro.offline. So now I'm, t I'm showing you a little bit the uh, command line tools, and we'll do VMC apps. You should be able to see the application that we had in the services. So here's the application books, and here is the services books to be. Now I want to show you a new feature we announced late, uh, recently, which is called Tunnel. So I'm going to do VMC Tunnel. And I'm going, it asked me to which tunnel basically allows me to actually access the services that I'm running and directly do a SQL query, for example. So it asked me to which service to bind, and I'm, that's the books DB1. And it asked me to create a password. It's binding the service, by the way, it's based, the name is based on the Caldecott tunnel in San Francisco. So that's kind of the feature behind us. So we're actually starting an application and binding to your books database with your own password, obviously. And now I can e even start a MySQL client that I have here. And I'm going to do select star from books. I hope that's the name of the table. Yep, you see those are the two books that I have. So. The point of this is that I can actually, from moving from like this closed, uh, this path environment where everything was like, uh, you know, drag and drop, and I, I kind of felt like I'm losing control, very easily I can go and actually go into this, the service that I deployed and query with a simple SQL query, and obviously I can do whatever I want here, updates, insert, whatever, it gives me the complete flexibility of what developers want. So, um, what I, uh, do we have uh, 30 minutes to do the note chat? What, where are we? Um, so, we have a few minutes, yeah. Okay, we so, yeah, so let's, 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 so uh, we're gonna run a little bit late on time, but I think it's worth it. So, we're going to do the, uh, another simple, another cool application, this time using the Node framework and Redis. So, so far we demonstrated using Java Spring, MySQL, and Postgres. Now we're gonna demonstrate a different framework Node.js, very popular framework to build uh, mobile and web applications, and a different service called Redis. All of that running on the same Cloud Foundry pad, again, and in two clouds. Remember, choice of frameworks, choice of services, choice of clouds. So the first step is I'm going to go to where my um, application is. Okay, just a minute. 
So this is um, this is let me bring this back again up. Hope you can see the fonts better now. This is uh, based on the standard uh, Node Chat sample app in the open source uh, repo, um, and this is a, a Node application that I can that I can actually use a red uh, service to um, store data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy this on my microcloud first. So it asks me if I want to deploy here. This is the equivalent of um, of the of the drag and drop command you've seen in the previous demo. It detects that this is a Node.js application. We'll just use the 64 and we'll say yes. We want to bind services, and we're going to use the Redis service. We're fine with the name. It's going to create the service and it's going to run the application. So basically, what we have now is a Node.js application running as a simple chat app locally here on my microcloud bind into a Redis service. So if we just go to chat.cfmicro offline, you can see the chat here. And hey, it's just me. Now, no worries. We're going to do the exact same thing now on cloudfoundry.com. So what do we have to do first? Target. We need to change our target back to cloudfoundry.com. So you see how I'm playing with this target command from one cloud to the other cloud without changing my application? That's the true promise of multi-cloud. That's the truth behind the slides. So VMC target, and I'm going to do the same push stuff here. And this time you will be able to you to participate with me in the chat. Um, let's call it uh, March chat. It's going to be on march.chat.cloudfoundry.com. Again, it detected this is a Node.js application. We're going to bind the uh, same red, uh, the Redis service. It's going to create the service, and now my chat will be live in a few seconds. And I can actually now scale it to 100 instances if I want, and it will be very, very quick. So I can go to marchchat.cloudfoundry.com. Here we are live. Let's see if anyone joined. Okay. Hey, we have someone join. Now uh, we can all chat. Great. So, um, again, same app. This time a different framework deployed on cloudfoundry.com. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing and um, bring it back to uh, Lucinda. Right. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, I'm sure you have some questions, and we'll continue to stand by in the Q&A session um, online, and uh, sorry, the chat, se chat session online, and answer your questions for the next few minutes. And again, please look for the recorded webinar that I'll send in email. Thanks for joining, and have a great day.